time I see this ad from Barack Obama, I think the same thing that I'm, I'm sure you're thinking. The ad where he says the choice couldn't be any bigger than it is now. This is a huge choice. It can't be any bigger. Over the next four months, you have a choice to make. Not just between two political parties or even two people. It's a choice between two very different plans for our country. Sometimes politics can seem very small, but the choice you face, it couldn't be bigger. It's absolutely true. The choice, in my mind, is the biggest America has faced in my lifetime. Um, it is a choice uh, as, as big as it was at Lincoln's day. Whoever the next president is, he will chart the course for the country. Four years ago, Barack Obama told us, or should I say, warned us. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. And he promptly set out to do it. Most Americans didn't know what he meant by that. We didn't know for sure. We could only speculate. But fortunately, more and more of us have caught on since. He meant that he intended to transform us from a society, from a meritocracy, where merit mattered. One where we have equal opportunity to one where we have equal outcome. That's a huge difference. And it is a fundamental transformation of everything that you know. He meant that through the will and power of government, He could transform America's exceptional greatness into the same kind of greatness that other countries have. I believe in American exceptionalism, just as I suspect that the Brits believe in British exceptionalism and the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism. No, Mr. President. No. See, this is this is the fundamental disconnect of Barack Obama and a good portion of thinking America. He doesn't understand. And don't get me wrong, you know, I I actually think we should have sympathy for this guy. It will help us understand him. And you'll you'll, you'll actually see how trapped he is. It's perfectly understandable that he doesn't understand American exceptionalism. He wasn't brought up that way. He didn't have parents and friends and mentors telling him about America's exceptional greatness. His friends, his family, his mentors, his professors, those he sought out his entire life, told him the exact opposite. But this is where I disconnect with my feeling bad for him. He's supposedly the smartest man in the world. He should understand that. He should understand that he can't continue to tell us he feels the same way about us as we do. That he shares the same goals as the average American. He doesn't. His goals are social justice, outcome fairness, and a world where America is no better than any other country on the planet. What did he say when he was in Egypt? We will build the roads and bridges the electric grids and digital lines that feed our commerce and bind us together. What is absolutely clear is that we are witnessing history unfold. It's a moment of transformation that's taking place because the people of Egypt are calling for change. They've turned out in extraordinary numbers representing all ages and all walks of life, but it's young people who've been at the forefront. A new generation, your generation, who want their voices to be heard. And so going forward, we want those young people and we want all Egyptians to know America will continue to do everything that we can to support an orderly and genuine transition to democracy in Egypt. Now, as we watch what's taking place, we're also reminded that we live in an interconnected world. So here we are, in a battle of competing ideologies. 
You look at American accomplishments of the past, Mr. President, and say... Just like we've tried their plan, we've tried our plan, and it worked. That's the difference. That's the choice in this election. That's why I'm running for a second term. Here's the thing. The plan that he's talking about is different than the plan I'm talking about. When he says we tried their plan and it didn't work, he's talking about a different plan. He's talking about a big government, progressive, Republican plan. We're talking about the founder's plan, freedom and merit. The idea that that President Obama dismisses entirely. But he would. He doesn't understand it. How could you possibly say that you understand truly the founders and America when you never went to a 4th of July parade? You didn't go to fireworks on the 4th of July. You were raised in Indonesia. And then you moved to Hawaii, where you spent your teenage years in Hawaii, but not just Hawaii of today, the Hawaii of the 1960s, when Pan Am Airlines was still using this as a frontier. This wasn't Americanized in the 1960s. It was still an outpost on the American frontier. We were not as interconnected as we are now. Even if you go to Hawaii now, they still talk about the mainland. I've never been to the mainland. It's still a different culture in today's world where everything is a block away. He didn't grow up like we did. He doesn't understand it. The founder's ideas worked to the extent that hundreds of millions of immigrants poured into our shores just to be a part of it, to escape what they had anywhere else. It worked to the extent that we pulled ourselves, along with much of the rest of the world, out of the dark ages and into the brilliant electric light of freedom and hope and opportunity, success and invention. Is there another example like the American experiment to be found in all of history? Did millions pour across the borders of the Soviet Union? The great experiment that is China, North Korea, or Cuba? Those people have to turn their guards at their borders the other way to stop their citizens from fleeing. Our problem is stop people from coming in.